Oh, welcome to the next lecture. Uh, today we will <coughs> start an important uh, topic, which is actually a separate field of science and separate subject in itself called information theory. <coughs> Sorry. The reason for uh, teaching this particular, you know, topic uh, in the beginning, there are several reasons for it. Why I am giving the justification because you might have. If you might see some other courses or same subject taught by other people, some of them uh, even don't teach it, or even some of them will put it at the end, which is not correct. Completely not correct in my opinion. Uh, information theory. First of all, uh, there should not be any confusion about you know what information theory is. Some of you might be from uh, you know other background. They might be from computer science background, electrical background. They might think that it is something related to communication systems. So let me first of all clear the confusion that information theory is not a subfield of communication system. communication system theory <coughs> okay <coughs> it is a separate independent branch of mathematics okay and it has <coughs> it has applications which has applications in Yes, of course, uh, communication systems, computer science, you know, physics, statistics, economics, you know, and more. There are books written on information theory, its application is in biology its application in you know various subjects but we will not go into that and yes we can say in one way that it is a you can say branch of probability theory there is no doubt in that because you will see that information theory uses the language of probability theory now let me motivate with some examples what are the two fundamental problems in information theory for that i will give a very simple example let me give first example of coin tossing suppose <coughs> you toss a coin as usual head or tail are the outcomes and you map them to you know suppose 0 1 head to 0 and tail to 1 so you denote that by a random variable x okay S of omega from this sample space to 0 1 mapping okay now we would like to represent we would like to give a representation suppose you have a so here's a person a okay he tosses a coin and he wants to convey the result to person B okay and the rule is you have to convey only using binary bits 0 or 1 so here I think and 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 one more thing is the probability of head that is x equal to 0 is same as the probability of tail x equal to 1 is half okay a very simple example so a fair coin <coughs> now if you think empirically how many bits at least you need so definitely there is no other option you need you need one bit you need one bit to convey the information right or we can say to represent the result or to represent the result Trivial example, 
Now at least one bit means that you can use more than one bit also. Suppose you can use 0 0 for head and you can use suppose 1 1 for tail. No one can stop you from doing that. But here you are wasting one bit, right? Because you are using two bits, but one bit will work sufficiently here. Now this example may not be so you know intuitive because there is only one bit needed. Now let me take another example. Let's have this wheel that casino wheel 3 4 5 6 7 8 suppose it stops at 8 numbers only equally likely so if we represent the outcome of this wheel by x so this x can take values 1 2 up to 8 and what is the probability that x is takes any value i that is 1 by 8 right for i is equal to 1 to 8 now suppose again the same issue you have a you are here in the casino friend a and you are allowed to communicate with your friend b only via binary zeros or ones now how many bits you need at least to convey the information to convey the result to represent the result right so there are eight possible outcomes so you need three bits right suppose 0 0 0 0 0 1 to 1 1 1 okay so this may be mapped to 1 this to 2 and this to 8 <coughs> nice now if you use less than uh, 3 bits on an average suppose you use only 2 bits so what will happen so you can have 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so this will be mapped to 1 this to 2 this to 3 this to 4 after that you have to repeat 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so this will be mapped to 5 6 7 8 so there will be definitely an error at the receiver suppose you are conveying your friend that i got 1 0 so he will be confused whether you got 3 or it might be 6 so there will be an error <coughs> You cannot even avoid this error. This is such a great error that I mean the receiver will definitely make error. So it seems that less than three bits will not work. Okay. Now is there now we know that the probability of getting any number is one by eight. Now how can we quantify this? quantity that is the minimum number of bits minimum number of bits required to represent the outcome of a random source So you can see you can you can think of this wheel as a source of random bits or random numbers so you every time you roll the uh, wheel whatever you get you put that in the binary form continuously so when you see at the output suppose you get first of all three which can be maybe zero one zero then you get one which will be zero 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 then you get two which will be zero zero one so if you will uh, you know write the result in zeros and ones what you will see coming out of this experiment is these you know bits coming out of this experiment three at a time so you can think of this as a binary source in fact a random binary source because every time you roll the wheel you don't know what will be the outcome right and we need so uh, by with this toy example we got okay we need three bits at least to represent but can we have a general answer okay for this we have to you know set the notion of you know notion of information we we want to quantify it quantify it now here are some motivational examples see information when we say information it is related to uncertainty
<laughs> right see if i tell you that tomorrow is sunday with this do you feel any new uh, do you feel with your you know perception that you got any information you say no it's, why because it's a certain event okay similarly if i will uh, you know suppose i may use this that tomorrow temperature will be you know say 100 degrees celsius right again you will be you know heavily so there, there are here two states so this is this is an impossible event this is an impossible event so in so in one sense you will be highly surprised right highly so there will be a metric there should be a metric which if we feel that uh, probability of this event it is it is actually this probability of this event is zero so we should somewhat get something closer to infinity so you are you are infinitely surprised with this news right whereas here the probability uh, that tomorrow sunday is one so you should get an answer uh, closer to zero something is very certain you should have no information about it i mean you will get no information about it. This thing because it is uncertain. So here was developed the notion of information. So first of all, it uncertainty. You now, if the more the uncertainty, uh, we feel more information. Okay. And uncertainty is, you know. Now we have to see whether it is proportional to probability of an event or it is inversely proportional to probability of an event. Right? Now if you if you see if an event has less probability, you are more uncertain about it. So inversely proportionality means that carries more meaning. That is correct actually. So in other words, we can say that information. it should be inversely proportional to the probability of an event but what we need is that if probability is 1 this notion of information should give answer 0 right also if probability is 0 so in one sense i should be highly surprised that i should get some answer like infinity the other thing which uh, you know is little bit philosophical in its nature that is whether information is additive or it is multiplicative okay so if i give you if i tell you about two things does this information get added up in your mind or it gets multiplied okay so in other words uh, when two events will happen suppose we have event a about that tomorrow it may rain and event b may be that tomorrow it may be suppose lockdown suppose rain has probability p1 and lockdown has probability p2 now when i tell you these two things first of all what is the probability that tomorrow it it will be raining and it will uh, there will be lockdown right you know the joint probability so if i tell you probability it will rain and there will be lockdown since they are independent also so it will be p1 p2 so probabilities are getting multiplied but information should get added up that the information about rain and the information about lockdown 
in your mind you know in your perception you will add up the information there is no meaning of multiplying the information that will distort the information actually okay it's a little bit philosophical so what i mean is if we have some function for information definitely we got one point that it should be inversely proportional to p further i of 1 should be 0 and i of 0 should be infinity and i of p1 p2 should be i of p1 plus i of p2 what does it mean so here is a joint event which has taken place uh, so and their information should get added up simple now can you think of a function which we, which will satisfy such properties okay so let's see suppose i of p uh, i of 1 should be equal to 0 so we can think of lot of uh, ways so what can be i of p and at the same same time i of p has to be inversely proportional to p okay so what are the different options you can think of so any guesses so i can think of suppose e to the power minus say p minus 1 but again no or maybe if i write 1 minus this okay so for p is equal to 1 right uh, for p is equal to 1 uh, it becomes 0 but then will it satisfy i of 0 to be infinity no so you can try a lot of functions the only function the only function here is the word the only function which satisfies such properties is log function okay we'll take here log to the base 2 because we are dealing with binary things so if i define i of p as since it has to be inversely proportional to p i will write log of 1 by p okay now let's check i of 1 is 0 and i of 0 it goes to infinity right because log of 1 by p is minus log p and log 0 is minus infinity right you have to remember the graph of the log so here is the minus infinity this is p this is log of p and more importantly log of p1 p2 i of p1 p2 is log of 1 over p1 p2 which will be log of 1 over p1 plus log of 1 over p2 which will be i of p1 plus i of p2 okay so this quantity this is called also in the literature it is called self information self information gives you the you know notion of information for one particular you know outcome right so it means that suppose if you if you take the example of head and tail and uh, probability of head is half now how much information it is needed so it will be i of half which will be log of 2 to the base 2 which is one bit now you already knew it that it needs one bit for you know uh, conveying the information about one uh, outcome okay now you take the example of that uh, casino let me go back there where was the example okay here yes so what will be the self information here so it's one by eight probability so self information will be i of one by eight for any outcome so it will be log of eight 
to the base 2 which is 3 bits exactly the same answer right which you got with the intuition now this is the self information now what will be the average average you know self information represents number of bits also so average uh, information or also you can say average uncertainty okay so for that you need to take expectation as usual <coughs> so see what you can think of i i will tell you suppose x is a random variable now which can take these values suppose x0 x1 xk minus 1 okay these are different k values it can take and with with probabilities given by probability you know x is equal to suppose xk i represent by pk k is equal to 0 to k minus 1 so to make it more clear as uh, in coin tossing this k was 2 right so you have two outcomes x0 x1 where x0 was mapped 0 this was 1 right and their p0 is half and p1 is half similarly the wheel example you have k is equal to 8 right so you have the outcomes x0 to x7 so this is the general representation now i will have a notation that the self information i write as i of you know for a particular uh, you know case Suppose it is i of pk, or I can also write as i of xk, right? Which is log of 1 over pk. Now, this is for any particular k is equal to 1 to k minus 1, right? Now, what will be the average of this self information? So, average will be expected value of this self information i of pk what is expected value it is a discrete case here so it will be summation right the probability with which the event happens time is this value of self information right simple we have done this expected value right so this will be This quantity which which gives the average information, average value of the information, this is called entropy. Represented by h of x is called entropy. And even this is this is very important. This is actually the first information theoretic quantity which we have defined today. Entropy of a random You know, you can say it, uh, random uh, process also, but here we'll use random variable x, which can take values x0 to x k minus 1 with probabilities p0 to p k minus 1 is given by. Notation is h of x. This is the notation, and this minus is defined as summation k is equal to 0 to k minus 1 pk log to the base 2 pk 1 by pk. Right? So log of 1 by a is minus log of a. So I can also write as minus. I like this weight more. It is easy to handle in this form. Okay. <laughs> so now you can repeat and you can compute the average 
uh, expectation, you know, entropy. You can compute the average, you know, compute the entropy for the uh, cases we did coin tossing. So, h of x is uh, summation k is equal to 0 to 1, right? pk log pk base is 2, which is minus half log of half minus half log of half which will be 1 just check it 1 bit okay similarly you can take any uh, you know other examples and you can compute the entropy in particular so coin tossing if i generalize suppose probability of head which is probability that x is equal to 0 suppose that is p and probability of tail which is probability x is equal to 1 that is 1 minus p so this random variable which can take two values with you know, only two values is called bernoulli random variable okay i will be giving examples of random variables uh, as we need in the course and what is the general entropy for this right <coughs> See, you have here in the in the notion, you have here x0 and x1, and you have here probabilities p0 and p1, right? And x0 is 0, x1 is 1, p0 is p, and p1 is 1 minus p. So entropy is minus summation, right? k is equal to 0 to 1, pk log of pk to the base 2, which is minus p0 log to the base 2 p0 minus p1 log to the base 2 p1 and which is minus p log p minus 1 minus p log 1 minus p right so this particular entropy is only a function of the p we denote it by small h of p Okay, and it's called binary entropy. It is mentioned separately because it has some interesting properties which provide some insights. So, first of all, let's plot this binary entropy. Okay, we will plot it. So, what we first of all find is h of 0. Now, here is an important, uh, you know, assumption. See, what will be the entropy? at point 0 so when you will put h of 0 you will get a term log 0 log 0 what is 0 log 0 okay see th this is a problematic because log 0 is minus infinity right and 0 into minus infinity is not defined right so we will use the limiting case actually what will be the limit x goes to 0 x log x right so this limit how to get some idea of it see if you see the log x suppose you have a quantity 10 to the power 10 when you apply log to it it kills down the power it brings it down it becomes 10 right so log to the base 10 so log kills the rate Log if if x you know is linear log x is called sublinear right if x has a term like square when you put log on it it becomes 2 log x so log you know kills down the rate now here we are having two numbers one is x moving to 0 right and then there is a log x it is moving to minus infinity but as we know that log x is very slow right so here is a race between something moving to 0 something moving to infinity you know it is just like a dummy example that uh, you know we have some object here suppose and it is tied with a rope by this person a and b and person a is more strong right and person b is weak so it will this this object will move ultimately in the direction of a similarly this limit will move in direction of x goes to 0 and it will be 0 so limit of this is 0 okay so hence we define we define 0 log 0 as 0 
it is not equal to 0, we define it to be 0 to remove the discontinuity. So hence wherever 0 log 0 appears, that is defined to be 0. Now with this, we can get h of 0 is 0 and h of 1 is also 0. You can put in here 1, so it is uh, 1 log 1 which is 0, then uh, 1 minus p is 0, 0 log 0 is 0. So h of 0 is 0, h of 1 is 0. Now what about its nature? So we have to find differentiate uh, differential of this. So del h upon del p. Okay. So when you will differentiate it, what you will get? So you get uh, p. So here is this minus 1. Then you have to differentiate the log minus uh, log p. Then you have 1 minus 1 minus p so that will again become uh, let me go here first so it is 1 minus p log of to the base 2 1 minus p so you will get here uh, 1 minus p 1 minus p will go and internal so it will be plus 1 so plus 1 and then log of 1 minus p right so i think it should be here plus yeah now you put this equal to 0 okay you put this equal to 0 okay so this we put 0 so we get log of 1 minus p equal to log of p p is equal to half just check some sign change may be there so p is equal to half and you can also check that uh, you can also confirm it what will be the second derivative is an exercise for you check it and what you will observe is that second derivative at p is equal to half is less than zero so it means p is equal to half is point of maximum. So this function uh, is 0 at 0, it is 0 at 1 and it has a peak at half and definitely since there is a logarithm in it so I will plot it here, I don't have a space. So 0, 1 and this is the half point at, at half, h of half is 1. This type of function is called a concave function which has a maximum. So this example will give us some you know idea about the nature of entropy. So this much for today. So uh, in, in next lecture we will again recap these basic concepts and we will introduce other important quantities of information theory which will be needed in our subsequent lectures and they will be otherwise useful to other communities in different directions like computer science community also. Thanks for watching.